In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus told a story. Well, he asked a question, actually. In verse 13, he asked, he says, who do you say that I am? It's such an important question. Who do we say that Jesus is? And he asked his disciples. They'd been walking with him. He'd called them. They'd been walking with him. And, and it's an amazing thing that he would, ha he would ask them, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And it was amazing. Jesus had this wonderful response to that. It was the thing that he was looking for. He said, that's fantastic. You have received this revelation from God. This is a revelation you've got. I can just imagine Peter saying, wow, I had a revelation from God. Pretty good, don't you think? <laughs> and Peter was amazing. Jesus said to him, you've had this blessing. You didn't get this from people, from flesh and blood, but my Father who is in heaven. And then he said, I say to you that you are Peter. And the word is Petra. And he said, on this rock I will build my church. On this revelation that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so he had this revelation from God. He said he, it was a blessing from God. And then Jesus said, you will have authority in heaven and on earth. And all this flowed out of this revelation. Then he commanded his disciples that they shouldn't tell anybody. I think that's an amazing thing. Don't tell anybody. Jesus wanted people to get the revelation from God. He, wa he wants people to get the revelation. Sometimes we try and tell people stuff, but the revelation has got to come from God. It's got to come from the spirit world, friend. It's so important that we people who pray. Because it comes from the spirit world, the revelation. It's not information that makes a difference. It's revelation. And so, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And Peter took him aside and rebuked him. He said, no, Lord, don't, this is, shouldn't happen. Don't let this happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offence to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And it amazes me. The one minute Peter is having this revelation from God, and the next minute Jesus called him Satan. But Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, my words are spirit and they are life. And I don't think it's any different here. Jesus was speaking to the spirit world. To the Peter had heard from God and then he'd heard from the devil. Just like that. The spirit world is so real, friends. And we can hear from both. Just like Peter. And Jesus spoke to the spirit that was influencing Peter and said, get out of the way. And we've got to know which spirit world we're dealing with. We've got to have some discernment. And Jesus went on to say, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. And he began to speak about the motives, about the heart, about the thing that's on the inside. Why is it that we hear from the devil? It's because it's the stuff that's on the inside that allows us to draw from that. And he said, you've got to deny yourself. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? 
And we have this incredible picture here. You can gain the world but lose your soul. We can get everything but lose our way. And it's so important that we walk in the principles of God. Jesus said, take up your cross. We've got to deny ourselves. And I want to break this open a little bit, what it is to take up our cross, what it is to walk with this principle of God. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. I've caught them somewhere. See, there are so many scriptures that talk about this divine principle. We've got to take up our cross daily, it says in another one. Another one of the Gospels. In, in John chapter 12, he says it a little bit differently. He says, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. You know, there are many reasons for people to be lonely. One of them is that they're selfish. Selfish people can be so lonely because they don't die to their selfishness. We've got to take up our cross. I don't know if you've met selfish people. You meet selfish business people and they're all about making money for themselves. You meet selfish, proud people and, and they get offended with everybody else and they isolate themselves. It, there's, there's a principle here. We abide alone when we have, have selfish lifestyles. Nobody likes a selfish person. It abides alone, but when we fall into the ground and die. God has given us this agricultural principle right throughout the whole world. Every farmer knows that this happens. You sow a seed, you put it into the ground, it goes down into a place of darkness, and when it gets a little bit of moisture and a little bit of heat, something miraculous happens. You know, we still don't know how. Scientists have studied it. They know what happens, but how? How does this seed burst forth, push up through the darkness into the light? You know, when God wants to do something in your life, he'll often take you through this principle of death and resurrection. Sometimes it's like you lose everything. You end up in a place of darkness. And it's like you have this prophetic word and this promise that you're in this dark place and how on earth is this ever going to happen? But somehow or other, just as that you're in this dark place, the moisture, the rain, the wind of the Spirit comes, the moisture of heaven, the rain of heaven comes and activates something divine and breaks forth out and lets you lift up into the light again so then you can bring forth and bear fruit for him. But there's a death process that's got to happen. You've got to deny yourself and take up your cross daily. Are you hearing me this morning? There is a divine principle. When Jesus went down to hell and he had been separated from God by sin and he was carrying that weight and took it to hell and he took captivity captive down there, he knew that he had to be raised again, but he was trusting God that the Spirit of God was going to come and do that. He had to trust God. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. So it's the Spirit of God that raised him from the dead. He had to trust that the Spirit of God was going to come. And when you and I go through a death experience and we die to stuff, we've got to trust that God is going to come along and resurrect us somehow. Are you hearing me? It's death and resurrection. It's not just death. When we take up our cross, we've got to take and die to our selfishness, but somehow God is going to come and bring new life. It's no longer... I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. There's a resurrection power that comes from God. Sometimes we can go through hell. You know, if you're going through hell, keep walking. <laughs> keep going and trust God. God is a God of hope and hope does not disappoint. He wants to take us through and lift us up and bring his resurrection power around about us to lift us up out of that place of hell. But in that process, there's a dying that's got to take place, a dying to selfishness, a dying to self, a desire, a dying to ambition, a dying to doing our own things, a dying to do what I want. There is a dying that takes place, but out of it comes resurrection. Jesus broke the power of hell and death. 
on the cross. And when he went to hell and the power of Satan was defeated. Revelations tells us that we overcome by three things. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we lay down our lives to the death. Take up your cross daily. Brings victory over the devil. We walk in victory when we walk with God. We walk in almighty power when the power of God comes, friends. Sometimes the, the, we just need God to get around about our world and make a way. We need the, the power and the victory of God. I want to tell you a story about friends of ours. Deb and I have been praying for this lady. And uh, she's about our age. She's got a daughter. Just had a baby. And you would think this is wonderful, something to celebrate. The daughter rang her up three days after she'd had a baby. She said, Mum, I've had the baby three days ago. The mum said, what? And instead of this wonderful excitement about having this baby, there's this conflict. And you think that's a dreadful thing for a daughter to do, but you don't know what the mother has done to this daughter. This mum has tried to commit suicide so many times. This incredible selfishness around her world. Doesn't have any social skills, so she blurts out all these things that just are offensive. You know, unless we die to our selfishness, we abide alone. And so instead of this wonderful celebration that should be happening in this family, there's this heartache and conflict and rejection. And I'm thinking, God, what is it going to take? I'm so desiring a move of God in our nation. What is it going to take? God, you said you've given us the ministry of reconciliation. What is it going to take for reconciliation to happen in this family? What is it, how are you going to do it? And then the Lord spoke to me and spoke to me about when Jesus went to the cross, he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. So when Jesus went to the cross, before the cross, he got whipped, he got beaten, and he went without objecting to it. He did not open his mouth. He went like a lamb to the slaughter, the Bible says. He accepted the wounds. And for us to die to ourselves, sometimes we've got to accept the wounds that come. The wounds that want to kill us. The wounds against us. The things that are spoken against us. The rejections. Sometimes you've just got to accept them and they are what they are. For us to go beyond that to reconciliation. Rather than being reactive and putting the walls up again, putting the offences up again, being reactive to it. What? You've already had the baby? What? And creating another wall. And the daughter says to her mum, I can't afford to have toxic relationships in my family right now when I've just had this baby. And there's just this heartache happening. Friends, you don't have to go far to see it. It's everywhere. Down at the hub this week and talking to a lady that come in, she says, I've got my son out in the car and he's been on drugs and, you know, he's got a job here and there occasionally, but he doesn't want to come in. He says, mum, you're dragging me along to another church thing. And just a heartache. I think, God, you've given us the ministry of reconciliation. Somehow or other, God, you've got to bring your answer, your mighty power to help these people to, to come and the resurrection divine power of God to come and do a number on them, to help them over their, their selfish reactions that make them abide alone and to bring community again and build your kingdom in people's hearts and people's lives and people's worlds. Are you hearing me this morning? We, we need God. We need God so much. Sometimes it's only the divine power of God that can break through this. How do I take up my cross? Christ in me is the hope of glory. I need God to help me do that. I need God to help me do that. How do I do it? How do I embrace the wounds that come? I need Jesus to help me. I need his divine nature in me to do that. I've had some personal experiences in my own family. I had my daughter read me the riot act a few months ago and told me everything she could think of. It just shocked me, really. I think, God, what do I do? But I just embraced the wounds. 
I accept what you're saying. I didn't react, but I just asked her humbly, please forgive me. I'm still believing for an outworking of that. I'm still believing for a resurrection. I'm believing for God to come and do a number and help us because I'm looking beyond the cross for the joy of the reconciliation, the joy of the family, the joy of the enjoying one another again. Are you hearing me? See, beyond the cross, beyond death is a resurrection. There is power beyond it. Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. Sometimes shame gets around about us. We, we get shamed because of our sin, because of stuff in the past, because of things that, that happened somehow or other. This shame comes, but Jesus wants to come and break the shame. He despised the shame of dying naked on the cross to help us through it, to bring liberty and life and victory. To take up our cross, friends, means to head towards resurrection, to allow God to work by his mighty power and raise us up again and bring life and bring hope and bring victory. That's where we're headed, friends. Are you, are you hearing the spirit of this? I'll tell you one more story about my own situation. Hmm. You know, we think we're so smart sometimes. Scientists, you know, I heard about this scientist that, that thought he knew how to bring life. And he challenged God and said, I know how to create life. God said, okay, show me. And the scientist said, well, first you get some dirt. And God said, hold on, get your own dirt. <laughs> God makes way for us. The resurrection is a mystery. How does God do it? I, I don't know. But the spirit of life that comes when we walk according to the law of life in Christ, there is no condemnation. Shame is broken. There's liberty and there's life walking in that resurrection power. <laughs> we look past the whole chapter Three of Colossians says, seek those things which are above. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Seek the things which are above. Seek that which is eternal. What is eternal? People are eternal. Jesus is eternal and we're eternal. We're going to spend it with him or without him. Have this mind in you which was also in Christ, thinking not only on your own things, but also on the things of others. Being others-minded. Take up your cross. Be others-minded. Die to worldly stuff. This, this last story, I'll just tell you very quickly. I went through a, a, a death and resurrection experience myself. I'd, I'd been quite successful. You know, I was, I was area chairman, responsible for a, a bunch of churches. I had a whole bunch of investments. I had, I had five houses and a block of flats. And, uh, you know, I, I did it for my, for my um, financial well-being. And, you know, I've got six kids. Well, I thought there's one each for the, and my inheritance for them. And my marriage went south. My mind went south. Everything fell apart. And when all was washed up, I was left with $100,000 debt. I was left with... I had a work vehicle and a fishing rod and a chair and the clothes on my back. You're looking at a walking mirror. And I was just so gr grieving over the loss of everything. But I got to the place where I just accepted the wounds. It is what it is. Deb can tell you, when she first met me, I would say that all the time. It is what it is. Just accept it. Just accept it. Let it go. I died to that start. I also had to repent, what Deb was talking about, I had to repent of giving myself to the spirit of mammon, of wanting financial, you know, all that stuff. Just had to die to it. Don't want it anymore. And then when I'd walked through that and I died to all the selfishness that was involved with all that and all the loss, God came and he spoke to me and gave me a revelation of the river of God. And I'd had all this stuff and have gone downriver. 
But friends, there's more coming from upstream. I live in a river. And I would introduce myself and say, hello, my name is Tom, and I live in a river. And people would look at me and say, what are you talking about? But I was living it and I was walking in it. Stuff was gone, but God was still coming. It's all gone downstream. Goodbye. There's more coming. God is uh, around me and in me. My name is Tom and I live in a river. And from that, the things began to flow back to me. I found a place to live when I was on my own, living on a minimal income. Had a place to live, no furniture, no nothing. People began to give me things. I got given a nice leather lounge, thank you very much. got given a bed and a TV and a table and chairs and a fridge and I got given a house full of furniture. Had somewhere to live and a house full of stuff and I didn't even ask anybody. Didn't tell everybody, hey, this is what I need. It just came. And this river of provision began to flow around about my life again. And God was so incredibly gracious and good and, and I began to walk in joy and just, oh God, I need this. Next day it would turn up. I had a work vehicle that had two seats and I've got two daughters. I couldn't even pick them up to, to spend time with them. Somebody gave me a car. And, and the blessing of God began to flow. Friends, after death is a resurrection. God comes by his resurrection power. When we die to stuff, when we die to the desires, God can make way for his abundant provision. And it's not about things. It's about our inner life and our walk with God. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? We've got to walk with God and allow the provision of God and the resurrection grace and life of his spirit flow to us. What does it profit us? We can lose everything, Brony. But God will come by his resurrection power and raise us up and bring us life. And I believe that's a word for you. It's a word for all of us, but it's a word for you. That you're experiencing some grief and some loss. But God says, he comes by the resurrection power and he's going to lift you up into a place of joy and liberty with him. He loves us so much that he does that stuff. And somehow I didn't have a clue how God was going to restore me. It was a mystery. No clue. But that's okay. We've just got to trust him. We've just got to walk with him and allow him to do it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for your truth, Lord. It is not by our ability, but it's by your spirit. Somehow you do it, Lord. You bring life, you bring liberty, you bring grace. We thank you and honor you for your resurrection life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. While I was speaking there, you know, there are some people and you're identifying with this. You're identifying with, with a place of grief, a place of darkness. You feel like you've been buried. There are some people you feel like, you know, I'm still trying to find the, the way up. There are some people that really identified with the shame and, and that, that thing that keeps you isolated and alone. I'd love it if you'd allow me to pray with you and believe God for you. There's an anointing that God wants to bring to help you on this journey. He's a God of hope, friends. He's a God of liberty and life. Would you allow me to pray with you? Would you come? Would you let me to come and, and uh, just release the anointing over you to help you on the journey, to bring liberty and life to you? Because he wants to. If you can hear the heart of God, he wants to help you, wants to walk with you. Can I have our musicians? Please. If you want to respond to that, please come. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Spirit of God. There is resurrection and there is life and there is power. Father, I thank you, Jesus. There's something of the grace of God that wants to come. I'm believing for it. I'm expecting it because he's given me this message. And uh, he wants to touch our hearts this morning. There is somebody here and you're locked up in grief. Like this thing has just shut you down. God wants to break that off you this morning. This is God of resurrection. He wants to help us. Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, your Spirit. Oh, your Spirit. Would you 
grace flow. Turn your heart, hearts towards God with me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. This is her 57th wedding anniversary, and her husband passed away this year. And uh, they were so very, very close. But this was the man that just a couple of weeks before he passed away gave me that prophetic word that I read out in church. And uh, here she's got a word for us. I wasn't going to bring it because, anyway, I wasn't going to bring it. It's about the dry bones in Ezekiel. And I see. Can you hang on to that for me, Neil, please? I'm going to make use of you. Um, he used to call me Vera all the time. He never called me Irene. He used to call me Vera. I'm not a Vera. I tell you what, there's a lot of people in this church that keep the same treatment. Okay. Come on, Lord, help me. Dry bones. There's a lot of dry bones in the church. And Ezekiel can take. In Ezekiel, God said, can these dry bones live? And I see this in some people in the church. We're a pile of dry bones. Not everybody, but many. Some of us are tired. Some of us have been through a battle. Some of us feel whipped. And some of us say, what can I do? I'm only one person. What difference can I make in the world? And God says, yes, you can. Amen. He spoke to me this morning when Neil was talking about the hub. Yes, you can. Prior to the election, I see much of Australians as a lot of dry bones. But God touched people's hearts and he performed a miracle. Now it's up to us to speak to the dry bones by speaking life into our nation. You know, like in America, when President Trump was elected, all hell broke out and it's still breaking out for him. But he is doing a mighty job and we need to support our Prime Minister, no matter what, what, what um, party you believe in, God says that you pray for your leaders. In Ezekiel, God put flesh on the bones and we need a heart of flesh, a soft heart to this wonderful land of the Holy Spirit. God put blood into the flesh and covered the, whole, covered the body with the skin to hold it together. We need to pray and believe that the blood of Jesus never loses its power in this nation and it's under attack today. And we are to cover this nation with the precious Holy Spirit. Then God breathed life and amazingly it covered those beautiful bones and they stood up like an army. And so by our prayers and our witness in what we can hardly read my writing, in our witness, we breathe the life of our precious Saviour into the hearts of the people of Australia. And as I said before, can one person make a difference? Yes, we can. So let's stand up and be counted and let the dry bones live. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Amen.